All right, so hello everybody. So as I said, please have lots and lots of blankets, uh, bowl, whatever you've got, bolsters, pillows from your bed, and at least a uh, strap, something to strap around. Uh, two blocks if you've got, that will be great. Our first one that we're gonna, first restorative pose that we're gonna be working into, you're gonna need a bolster. So Jillian's here to help me. You're gonna take the bolster. You're going to lie on your back heel. Okay. I'm going to place that right underneath our squashy go, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to take the strap. I'm going to strap up the ankles. My leg is so tight. There, strapped up. And then I'm going to take the blanket and I'm going to make a smallish kind of pillow to go underneath her neck. So it doesn't need to be rolled up all the way, just about half the way is fine. Place underneath the neck. Palms are gonna face up, roll the shoulders back and down, and then just allow the knees to relax out. That's why the, the feet are together and the knees are relaxing out. So I'll give you a moment to get into the pose. We're going to work on about three to five minutes per pose, depending on how our time goes and how long it takes you just to get into the pose. And make sure you're perfectly comfortable. Relax. Close your eyes with the back and go. Okay. If you want to work with an eye bag, please work with an eye bag. Make sure that you surrender as much as you can. Just working on a clock. So I'm going to start the timer now. Work into your space. Make sure the biggest thing is that that bolt is right up to your buttocks. Your knees are out to the side. Your feet are tied together. Otherwise, they fall up and allow the knees to open up as well. Roll the shoulders, palms up. Just relaxing into the space. Just turn up the sound of the music.
mind connection. It's not just surviving, but it's thriving. Slowly, we're going to start to work into our next position, working over onto our bellies. So slowly coming up. You can keep your feet strapped and bring your feet over to the side and replace another bolster underneath that bolster. So if you've got another pillow, you can place it underneath there. I'm going to work still over onto your belly. You can face this way still. that way. The blocks are going to go underneath your shoulders and I'm going to roll up a little blanket so that I can work a little place for her head to work on like if she was going for a massage. I want to make sure she can breathe. Your arms back that way. So stretch them behind you. You can see she's relaxed her head, shoulders are relaxed. A nice lift through the back, kind of like a little beach whale. Keep breathing. Breathing nicely. Shoulders are open and stretch back. Inhale, hold. Slowly working into the pose. Just giving you a moment to get into it. If you have someone around you, you want to make it a little bit more active and um, healing, you can always place something on top of the back to push down a little bit of weight. It's an option. So just relaxing there. So when we are talking about good mental health, most people want the same thing in life. Good health Loving relationships, meaningful work, positive recreation, and spiritual activities. In this year, no wonder our mental health has suffered because we have been disconnected from the many things that have supported us. Exactly those good health, meaningful work positive recreation and spiritual activities. And this is why I really want to acknowledge each and every one of you for taking the time to practice yoga and to release the emotional and mental pressure at this difficult time. Just to release into the comfort and the support of your props. 
just to receive that support. And let go of any tension that is around you. Be 
emotions are a natural response to external triggers, like the limitations that we all have experienced due to anything that goes bad in your life, such as the world health pandemic. So good mental health is really about accepting rather than struggling with the parts of our inner experience. And we have to understand that we have no control over that. So what we can invest is our time and our energy on things that we can control. Good mental health is knowing the difference between what we can control and what we cannot control. There are three things that you can't control. And that's really the past, the future, and other people. can't control everything. Sometimes you just need to relax, have faith, that things will work out, and let go a little, and just let life happen. Hillary Clinton says, I think that if you live long enough, you will realize that so much of what happens in life is out of your control. But how you respond to it is totally in your control. It makes no sense to worry about things you have no control over because there's nothing you can do about them. And that's why we worry. Why worry about things we do control? The activity of worrying keeps you immobilized. Remember, it's not what you say to everyone else. It's what you whisper to yourself that has the greatest power. And slowly let's start to move to the other side. So changing over those legs. Do it slowly so it's not too hard. mental health that is in control is aligning it with our values. Our daily values and things that we believe in. So in other words, aligning our actions with our values. So one of the things we're doing right now to preserve our mental health is turning to practices like 
yin yoga and restorative yoga. Because I didn't recognize the circumstances of the past year or any struggles that we are facing. They have brought up thoughts, feelings, memories and sensations. And despite all of this, we choose to take actions in our lives that are aligned with our values. So in this time, please give some respect and thought to your values. Elvis Presley says, values are like fingerprints. Nobody's are the same, but you'll leave them all over everything you do. And remember, it's not hard to make a decision when you know what your values are. There are five things that you can control in your life and every day. And those are your attitude, your words, your actions, your manners, and your efforts. that this very moment is the only one you know you will have. And let's slowly start to come up. Joe. I'm sorry, the music and the voice is it's breaking. Right. It's breaking up. Okay. So I'm going to get it half. Okay, let me turn the music down. Thank you for telling me. Okay. Okay, let me just turn it right down. Okay, let's see how that goes. Thank you. Okay, so our next pose we're going to work into is our um, our reclined heart opener. So what we're going to do is we we'll take the bolster or any pillow you've got, place that down. Wait, even I'll put it this way. Place your knees right over there. Is that a lot better? Can you hear me, everybody? Thumbs up. Beautiful. Okay, you're going to take a block. And you place the block underneath the thoracic spine. And then we're going to take the blanket or a pillow and you place it underneath your head. So come up again and just place it down to where your bra strap is and your head there. Place your head down. Okay, shoulders are rolled back. Now, obviously, if you want it a little bit harder than this, I will lift you up and I'll see how you do with that. So that's really extending, opening up the shoulders, opening up the chest. All right. So you're open up completely. The knees are nicely relaxed. Shoulders are open. Really extending open into it. Palms facing up.
to just relax into this pose. All right, so just relaxing. As you relax in the space, I need you to have patience. Patience is a calm acceptance that things can happen in a different order than the one that you have in your mind. Patience is to take your time in this practice to be liberated from hurrying around from here to there and everywhere. Yin yoga is a great practice for emphasizing patience. Simply because we spend so much time in each posture. Becoming patient in an impatient world is an incredible tool and skill to, lo to learn. The practice of patience can arise from the ability to be kind. Remember that kindness costs nothing, but means everything. Patience is not passive waiting. Patience is accept active acceptance of the process required to attain your goals and your dreams. Two things can define you. Your patience when you have nothing and your attitude when you have everything. And slowly we will come out of the pose. So pushing on your elbows, very slowly lifting yourself up. All right, moving your props up the side of the way. We're gonna make our blank into a nice square. And you place your pillow to the side of your right in the center of the mat. You're gonna lie yourself down onto your back. Bring your knees up and then place that blanket right in between the knees. Place your feet down onto the floor and just lift your hips up so you can just lift and just relax because you just had such a big stretch. Place the knees back down. Lift the knees up once again. Okay, place down. Now lift the knees up to 90 degrees. And then arms out to the side. And we allow the knees to fall over closest to your shoulders and rest onto that bolster. We are opening up into a reclined twist. Obviously, if you're as flexible as Jill, I'm going to remove the bolster completely and allow her to rest on the floor. Awesome. Much nicer for you. So she won't be using anything today, but she will be having a full twist to the side. So work yourself into what feels most comfortable. 
from just surrendering to the pose. Obviously, if you want to push it a little bit harder, and because she's not using the bolster, I can always use something and just place it onto her to give her a little bit more of a push. Go ahead and take it the full Monty all the way. No! I'll put a bolster on you. How do you feel? Yeah, that's fine. See, that's the problem with my pulse. <laughs> I don't know what you can do. I don't know what you can do. I'll look here. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Here we go. All right. So, this is just a nice reclined twist, but it's really pushing her to extent and no extreme. So I want you to notice how your physical body feels at this point. Notice how your breathing is. But more importantly, notice how your mental health has shifted over the course of the class. We're already halfway in. Notice your purpose, how you feel connected with yourself and with others, if there's been a change or a shift. So one thing that yoga has developed and what it does develop is compassion. We can all know that we are trying to cope with stresses the best that we can and restorative yoga allows us to relearn the art of relaxation or developing the skills and the ability to self-soothe. It enhances our healing capacities while helping us to regulate the stress response and to rebalance our nervous system. So compassion is to look beyond your own pain and to see the pain in others. The Dalai Lama says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Slowly going to start to go to the other side. So bring the knees up and then place the feet onto the floor first. Lift up your hips. Then place the knees back down. 
You can move your bolster to the side. Lift the knees up and then work them over to that side. Resting down. So in this case, heels down and we get herpes. So heaviness again. And allow her to relax. Just get yourself ready into the space. Again, I want you to check in here. Allow yourself to sink into the support of the props or into the earth. Allow that feeling of heaviness. As we found compassion with others on the other side, I would like to explain the yin yoga movement a little bit to you on this side. Yin is feminine, soft and passive. The gentle traction and the compression held over a long period of time helps you to flush out toxins, and to lubricate the joints while releasing tension in the ligaments, the fascia, and the tendons. It also is particularly great for tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system. If you think of rest and digest versus fight or flight. So this acts as a break when it comes to stress. It enables you to balance the energy throughout the body. Staying in the process for a long time forces you to be present, to breathe, to be with your thoughts and any physical discomforts as they arise. Eventually you learn to calm that chatter in the mind. In Sanskrit we call it the nitty fritty. So the nervous system is then regulated from the fight or the flight and that whole response system is then relaxed. So this was brought out by a gentleman back in the 70s who was a martial artist, a master of martial arts. And he found this to really work and they've done a lot of research on it to see the benefits. And yes, it is hard, but it's got huge benefits. Sarah Powers, who was part of that whole program, she says each yin pose is an opportunity to crawl into ourselves and to stay a little while. Judith Hanson Lester says, receive the breath. Receive the weight of the body. Receive the moment. Give up ambition. Give up movement. Give up fear. And simply rest. And as Buddha says, accept what is. Let go of what was and have faith in what will be.
and slowly coming back to the center, facing down your feet for now. Lift up those hips, have a little stretch. And down and release your blankie. We're working to Adam Mukha Virasana, which is our child's pose. Do a come up and you know, sit that place your toes together, your knees apart. So facing forward. So you know, move on to your bolster. Okay, so toes together, knees apart, and I'm going to place the bolster right inside, in between, pushing it as much as possible, and Jill's going to lie over the bolster, stretching her arms out. So this is probably the, the biggest option for a lot of people. You can push your hips down as much as you can, and extend. Now in Jill's case, she's extremely flexible, so I'm going to remove the bolster. You may have no bolster there. And she's just going to work herself down into normal Adha Mukha Virasana, which is our child's pose, forward facing Virasana, our hero. Okay, so work was comfortable. If you have problems with your knees, I have some people with knee difficulties, just to recommend, Jill, come back up. You're going to lie here. And I'm going to pull it forward a bit. And come forward onto it and come forward onto the top, top, and come forward, 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 forward. That's it, my down. So if you have knee problems, that's how you're going to lie. It's kind of like um, Mandukasana, so you're working to a frog. Okay, go all the way back. So that's for knee problems. Go back into your Adamuka Purasana. Okay. If you've got someone around with you, can organize. I'm going to put something on her back to make it heavy. So this is a beautiful way for her to really relax into it. So get yourself nice and comfy into it. Settle yourself down. And let's enjoy this moment as much as possible. It's one of my best poses. Same if you were going into your frog pose where your knees are out. You still just stretched over the pillow, so place the pillows under you, stretch out, and you just place something on the back. But at least there's no pressure on the knees. I know for Ingi, you could do that. You release the knees, just work yourself over. Okay. You see? Lovely. So release into that. Allowing the hips to release, these to the heels, the chest to rest. If you want, you can stretch your arms out as far as they go. Alternately, just let them fall to the side. Take a few moments just to focus in on the moment at hand and allow your breath and your attention to expand to the throat, the chest, and the upper back. Notice where there is resistance and extend your grace. We must face what is holding on in order to let go. Let the earth and the props hold you completely. And over time in this pose, release, dissolve. And let all the tension that let, that's left inside of you disappear. Just give awareness to yourself. And surrender your mind to the moment.
the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. Slowly, we're slowly going to start to come up. And we're working to our last pose before we go into our relaxation into Setu Bandha. So we're going to lie onto our backs. Uh, we're going to make a little, nice little lift up. I'll show you. I'm going to take two of my blocks by the feet. I'm going to make a little uh, stand. There you go. So put your pillow on top of your two blocks. And then I'm going to ask you to lift your <laughs> So, okay, so uh, yeah, I'm going to put this underneath you. So you might have to lift up your hands. Okay. Because Jill's quite flexible, I'm putting her quite far down. She's going to roll herself down, roll her shoulders open, and put her head down to the floor. So the options are. You can either be quite up where her head is nicely down, or you can lie a little bit further down so you have less of a slope. So what we're doing is she's working to a restorative setu banda. So it's pretty similar to what I do when I put blocks underneath your buttocks. But I want most of the body up above the floor and her head back. If I want to really push her up, I can always bring this all the way up and really place it here and her head falls back a lot more and shoulders are really stretching back. But I'm going to leave it just as this. So her chest is nice and open and working into the pose. So just get as good as you can. How do you feel there? Comfy? Okay. So just working into the space, get as comfy as you can into it. This release and this pose, it actually releases the psoas muscle, which is actually connected to your spine, coming from the front, directly tied to the spine. And this helps to relax our nervous system and our ventral vagal system. It also helps to rest your heart and at the same time, gives you a feeling of acceleration. It widens the pelvic girdle, it stretches the abdominal area and expands the chest, which then creates space for the diaphragm and allows the body to relax and move a little bit more freely. You'll notice you can breathe a lot better, opening up the lungs. And with this pose, really, you'll feel the encouragement of mental stability, balancing of your hormones, and balancing of your mood. Another nice pose to do, if you don't have all the props like this, is just lying with your legs up against the wall, but your butt is very close. Barapita Kriyani, stretched up. Also a great pose to do before you go to sleep. A 
as you just surrender into it. You need to learn to trust the journey, even when you don't understand it. If your path is more difficult, it's because your calling is a lot higher. A beautiful saying by Christine K. Sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think that you have been buried, but actually, you have been planted. Slowly you will start to come out of the pose, to go into Savasana, to lie on your back, to completely surrender and finish off our practice. Make sure you completely relaxed, calm down. Feet out, let go. Just completely As your body settles into this relaxed position, adjust as necessary, your mind begins to slow down. Scan your body. Scan it from head to toe, noticing where you feel energized and flowing, and areas where you may feel discomfort and stagnation. As you scan your body, notice how heavy you are and how heavy you've become. Feel the power of gravity pulling you down deeper and deeper down into the earth. With every out breath, feel your abdomen sink deeper and allowing more space for the inhale to fill your belly, your midriff, your chest and your lungs. A full yogic breath, giving your body all the relaxing benefits of deep breathing. As the breath deepens, the exhale continues to help you sink lower and lower down into the earth. A sense of peace, silence, and returning home is present within you.
On your next inhale, notice the contrast of growing and expanding and filling yourself with love and light. And every breath in, how it fills you and every breath out, you sink. Just allowing the filling of the energies and the releasing of the energies. Surrender and let go. As your attention comes back to your body, fill your heart with gratitude and love. And then start to wiggle your toes. Rub your thumbs over your fingertips. Turn your head from side to side. Take your arms and stretch them over your head. Have a good yawn and a good stretch. Slowly bring your knees to your chest. And roll over to your side. Twelve important steps for self-care. One, if it feels wrong, don't do it. Two, say exactly what you mean. Three, don't be a people pleaser. Four, trust your instincts. Five, never speak bad about yourself. Six, never give up on your dreams. Seven, don't be afraid to say no. Eight, don't be afraid to say yes. Nine, be kind to yourself. Ten, let go of what you cannot control. Eleven, stay away from the drama and the negativity. And number twelve, love. When you're ready, come to a seated position. May there be peace to the north, peace to the south, peace to the east. Peace to the West, peace above, peace below, peace within and peace without, and most importantly, peace with you and your family. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.